has rest, stays home and rest. So I know he's very much watching the order and preaching and hoping to be here. But we just want to remember him in our prayers, right? He's not sick nigh unto death. His mobility is greatly affected, and because of that, he is not able to be with us today. So we certainly want to remember him in our prayers. We also want to apologize for Bishop Austin Cawley of Newton in St. Elizabeth. As we know, he is not in the best of health, and so he cannot share with us in our convention. We want to also remember him in our prayers. Pastor Beckford out of West Prospect, he was here yesterday, but he has um, also an issue with his feet that really, really restricts him in terms of his mobility. He will drive, but when he needs to walk, it's not an easy road. And, and so he's unable to be here today. And we also want to remember him in our prayers. Also, apologies on behalf of Bishop William Wilby out of Nostrand Avenue in New York, who had every intention of being here, but because of medical reasons, he was unable to travel to this convention. I'm sure he's online also, and we want to remember him in our prayers also. Pastor Cordell Andrews, who wanted to be here, not medical reasons for him, but unfortunately he could not make it, and we just want to remember these are their brothers in our prayers. I see Minister James from New York. Yes, please stand, sir. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Stand and be acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord Jesus richly bless you. If we have inadvertently um, left anyone out, I'll come back at some point and we will catch up. All right? God bless you. My program is going to be a little bit different from yours in that some items that you have slotted. As I say program, I must apologize too for the, uh, should I say, short supply of our programs. We did a certain number and you have responded in such a magnificent way that very early yesterday, the programs were finished. And we had the experience in the past of sending programs to church on, on a day like today and tomorrow. We have a pile of programs stacked in the office that were never sold. But we are happy, although we are disappointed that some of you are not able to follow as you would like. But certainly, your support to the convention so far has been tremendous. If I may borrow an expression, you have sent us back to the drawing board. Because no, no matter how we plan for a number, you show up and say, you can't number us. We are going to come bigger and better. And it's kind of a nice feeling. Thank you very much, Shiloh. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for responding in this magnificent way that you have responded. The Lord Jesus richly bless you. All right, let's get to our reports. And as I said, there's some adjustment on my program, so don't be surprised if I don't call the items in the way you have them. All right, so we have our general report, which will be presented by Minister Hepzibah Henry, after which we will have the executive committee report, which will be presented by Pastor Richard Bowes. They will come in that order. The Lord Jesus richly bless you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. that one more time I would like to spring a little surprise here 
if I'm privileged to do so. Mr. President, I want you to join with me to sing happy birthday to a very special person. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, Elder Gardner, happy birthday. Can, can we do that one more time? You never know who. Elder Gardner, please, right, please stand. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Pastor Gardner, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. And where is an, a better place to spend your birthday than in the house of God? Praise Jesus. <laughs> I want to extend greetings to all of God's wonderful people, firstly to our president, and his beloved wife, to the vice president, his wife, to the chairman, his wife, to the assistant chairman, and his wife, to my help mate, and let me say call her now, Pastor Peter, and to all God's wonderful, beautiful ministers. I didn't say help me, too. I say help me. <laughs> Pastor Peter Smith. <laughs> I want to extend greetings to all God's wonderful people, to the choir, beautiful choir of young people with young voices, and to all God's wonderful, wonderful, beautiful saints. I greet you today in the exalted name of Jesus. Truly, he has been good to me. And because of that, I'm still standing here today with much more help than I've ever had before over my 30 years. I am I'm able to sit back and relax and just say, do that for me, do that for me, and it is done. Praise Jesus. Okay, I have just a little report here for you today. <clears throat> Bear with me, please. Report of the Shiloh Apostolic Church of Jamaica International Secretariat Report. Shiloh is celebrating its 81 years of anniversary under the team proclaiming the kingdom. As an organization to have reached this great milestone where we are celebrating 81 years, it caused us to, be, to reflect on how we have endured many rough times, though ex through, especially from 1942 to 1963. In spite of the difficulties, the organization was legalized by the, TN, by the then T.N. Golden. Since then, many have come and many have gone. But we must give God thanks for those who have stood in the tough times holding the fort until we are able to take up this button to run this leg of the race. Moving along with Jesus who is leading the way, and he's taking us to a place we have never gone before. We are aware there are mountains to climb, there are valleys below. But with Jesus our guide, we are determined to go all the way. We celebrate, we celebrated 80 or 80th annual general convention in April 2022 under the capable leaders of the acting president, then Bishop Delroy Farr and his team of workers, there was a sense of excitement and high 
expeditions from our membership. And so it was quite fitting to utilize a facility other than our own accommodation, under our own to accommodate the service. After several planned meetings with the executive committee and the executive board, we were able to materialize this suggestion and there we began our celebrations. We are therefore grateful to the management and staff of Kendall Camp and Conference Center for opening their doors to receive us for the period during the year 2022. The convention was a great blessing as testified by many and we were blessed with 25 souls who received the gift of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> The team of workers did not stop there. We went back to the drawing board and another committee was formed and named the Convention Center Redevelopment Committee. Under the steady hands of three members of the executive board, namely Pastor Paul Chana, Pastor Everton Charlton, Everton Charlton and Pastor Almando Simpson. These men, along with their expert team and staff, have taken off with the work like a ball out of a gun. <clears throat> take a look around us and take a moment to reflect on the conditions that the site was in. Hats off to the team. I, <clears throat> I think they need a better round of applause. The team of workers did not stop there. Sorry, okay, sorry. Our annual National Women's Day that was usually held in May took a different approach in 2022. Instead, we had a day of fasting and prayer in four different circuits. Bishop Farr, leader team to Mango Valley in St. Mary. Bishop Andrews led a team to Houghton Court in Hanover. Pastor Bowes led a team to Kingston Lane in Kingston, and Pastor Everton Charlton led a team to Fairfield in St. Elizabeth, while Pastor Chana and a team camp convention center to clean up the ground. Reports from all the, group, from all the groups were successful, both spiritually and temporally. We are thankful to God for the workers who have joined hands and heart with cash and coins, and we are in a frame of mind to build convention center. It was in the plan to have our youth convention held here and the cent at the center, but things would not have been ready on time. As a result, we went back to Kendall Camp and conference center where once again we had a wonderful time in the Lord. This was supported by a lot of our pastors and churches from overseas. We were blessed witness 25 more of our saints who were filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. To God be the glory. The glory. Twenty twenty two was also a year of great loss with the passing of some of our bishops and pastors, including the late presiding Bishop Lee H. Walsh, Bishop Hector Allen, Bishop Donald Smith, Bishop Lance Reed, Past and Pastor Esley Small. They have labored faithfully in the vineyard and made their soul rest in peace. We were able to host the memorial service 
to honor the life of the late presiding Bishop Lee Harold Walsh on Heroes Day in October 2022. Thanks to the Convention Center Redevelopment Committee, their demonstration of passion and regards to the building, the Convention Center is unmatched. The memorial service also features our, we are 36, we are 36 member churches participated face to face along with our churches and have contributed two million eight two million and eighty one thousand seven hundred and sixteen dollars and we say thanks to you very much thanks for showing for showing that you are serious about the continued development of our organization. The exec executive board, along with the redevelopment committee and the National Youth Department came together to host the convention center con reconstruction, relaunch event instead of the annual youth day. This was yet another beautiful and informative day completed with food, funds, and fellowship. Since then, the committee had continued to build, and in some short time, they were able to bring us to where we are now, so that we can comfortably host a convention. This means no more hiding from the sun, no more hiding from the rain, can I hear amen for that? <laughs> to go even further, look at our lovely dorms. Can you see them? <laughs> our conference room. Is there anyone who have not yet gone into the conference room? <laughs> our nurses station over there. and not to mention our prestigious restrooms ah. and many more. Through meetings of the executive committee and the executive board, it was decided that we should convene a special session of the board for the election of a president out of that meeting a nomination committee was formed with Pastor Richard Bowes, Pastor Selvin Bernard, Pastor Cinderella Anderson, and Minister James McClacken. And the election date was set for Saturday, January 14, 2023. On this day, the meeting was held in our newly built conference room with 40 members present face to face and others joining online to include our overseas pastors. The nomination committee presented their finding in a di diplomatic way. As a result, the board elected as president our own beloved bishop, Bishop Delroy Newton Farr. Our Vice President, Bishop Kingsley Lloyd Andrews. <laughs> Pastor, Garfield Pastor Garfield Montgomery Jordan, move up to the place of the chairman. Pastor Paul Archibald Chana, Step into the seat of the assistant chairman. Then, we didn't have an executive, uh, we didn't have a general secret, assistant secretary for years who was 
operating in that position. We had the name of one, but was not operating. So, Pastor Elmer Peter Smith stepped into that position, the Assistant General Secretary. These are our leaders, along with the others who together are ensuing that all pulling the ship a sail and will do so for the next three years if Jesus tarries. We need everyone to support us to go forward. We were also able to restructure and the uh, auxiliary. Sorry, we were also able to restructure the auxiliary and set them as the department. And so the Sunday School Teachers Association, which is now called the Department of Christian Education. It is moving Victoria from victory to victory under the leadership of the Director General Past. The National Youth Department is, is now the Department of Youth and Children and is under the leadership of Pastor Almando Simpson, Simpson and <laughs> Minister Orlando Sinclair. They are moving from strength to strength. In time to come, the ladies will elect their new leaders and therefore allowing some one of the great women. Let me go again. In time to come, the ladies will elect their leader and therefore allowing some of the great women along with us to take up the button and get the Department of Women going. We also launch a department of men. The president visited Lauriston and Gravel Hill, where he served Lord's Supper and both churches at both churches. Addition, additionally, he visit and participate in the anniversary service of Bethel Shiloh Apostolic Church at Connecticut in the USA. Our Vice President also, Bishop Andrews, visit Old Road and West Prospect and others. I must also report that Pastor Michael Koff has recently been elected to serve as the new chairman of the United States Planning and Purchasing Committee. with Pastor Gardner as the Vice Chairman. Also, our Chairman, Elder Jordan, is, has returned shortly from visiting Los Angeles, Shiloh Apostolic Church. We are making simply strive to carry on with Jesus as our help and guide. We therefore crave your patience and understanding as we move through this changing time. For with unity and with Christ as our head, we will continue to build on the foundation that is already laid. Praise the name of Jesus. This is my short and brief report. I now pass back to the chairman in Jesus' name. Yes, you may. I'm accustomed to my name being mispronounced, not to be promoted, Evangelist Henry. Minister Henry? Minister Henry? I'm quite accustomed to my name being mispronounced. I'm not accustomed to being promoted. Not the chairman, all right? Praise Jesus, everyone. Praise Jesus, executives. 
Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll try to make my report. Um, but much shorter. Um, this is the report of the Child Apostolic Churches of Jamaica and International Executive Committee report. The current, oh, before I get to that, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, um, Pastor Jordan did apologize for the short or the inadequate programs that we have and um, we had a discussion with the Secretariat and decided that we probably would not print any more programs because they wouldn't be available until about Wednesday and so if those who are interested in programs they can be had electronically and you just need to leave your number at the office and you can be sent a copy or there are excellent technical people around we can have a QR code set up right brother PJ in no time and you can get uh, an electronic copy on your phone all right so if you have relatives abroad or friends or more senior persons you can have a copy and it is for free bishop right sir all right if bishop says so then it means it's free all right all right so the current executive committee comprises 11 active members of those previously appointed over a year ago and three new members appointed by president bishop Farr during this year reflecting his vision of ensuring the decision making process of the committee is broad based and more inclusive those who are older than me will know exactly what that means all right bishop d far the members are bishop d far bishop kingsley andrews bishop Wilby, pastor jordan pastor charlton pastor channel pastor anderson pastor simpson yours truly um, Minister Henry that we heard from a while ago and Pastor Franks. Frank, we lost Bishop Allen during the reporting year. The new appointees are Pastor Dr. E. Peter Smith, Pastor M. Cuff, and Pastor. Let me welcome these three new individuals to the committee. That's the Lord. Our committee met on 14 occasions since our last general convention dealing with the day to day and some time and we ask forgiveness because when Bishop Farr need to get to bed Lady Farr by 10 o'clock we insist that he stays up with us till 12 o'clock and those bad hours all right there there's a range of issues that the team had to focus on throughout the year on your behalf these include managing disquiet at a couple assemblies, visiting and bringing comfort to pastors who were not well. Bishop Farr and Bishop Andrews sort of um, ratcheted up the visiting of different assemblies. Um, we entered into a lease arrangement with Digicel for the tower space up the top there. Um, we arranged a host of pastors council meetings and we heard of the establishment of the Hanbury Redevelopment Committee. This too was the subject of very lengthy deliberation and at the end of it we came away with ensuring that our own in-house team was able and capable to lead this task and we are seeing the results now. We also established a nominating committee to oversee the election of the executive and we also streamlined the organization financing and banking system and authorized the establishment of a finance committee and also there was the restructuring and the renaming of the departments to reflect current and modern management approaches. So the committee does keep focus on, build, on building on the work done by our forerunners. There are many things that require attention to get to the point of satisfaction. But we can assure you we are aware of all of the challenges, but it is important to maintain, fo maintain focus with steady hands. It is noteworthy that the mantra of our president is inclusion 
and participation. There is no major decision that is taken by our presiding bishop and his team without it being subject to lengthy discussions and, and as broad based participation as, as is possible. And we ask that you put your hands together for this change in direction. And, and Bishop Andrews is adding that whatever is being done, it is subject to scrutiny. All right? Um, I must add also that the executive committee led by Bishop Farr shields this organization from a host of negative things. Um, Bishop ensures that whenever he stands, he pays homage to our forerunners and ensure that there is no trace of anything other than complementary activity. There is a choice. There is a choice because he could have set a different tone and, 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 and what you call like me, hotheads like me would follow the, the, the negative tone if that were the case. But thanks be to God, we are led by steady hands a bishop and a deputy who knows how to chart a direction that is non-confrontational and one of peace. Please put your hands together for our bishops. Bless the Lord Jesus. And I just want to mention in the, I have 10 more minutes, but I'll use just half a minute to finish up. Just to mention that Thursday, we will be having a wellness Fear, and this includes a number of entities that will be here to offer services for free. This includes NCB card services. I'm not seeing Sister Bowes to agree with me. But NCB card services will be here to give us what? Free debit cards and so on, Sister Joan and little fan dangles. And also Dr. McLaughlin, Cheryl McLaughlin, um, daughter of Minister James McLaughlin leads a team from Heart NTA that will be here to offer a wide range of services to include certification in customer service. So if you desire to work at a front desk or you work in customer service and you have the skills, but you are not trained or certified, you can get a certificate on the spot. And this includes additional activities that will be done here on Thursday. Also, um, we will be having presentation on estate management, that little piece of land that grandma, grandpa left and you're not so sure what to do with it. Um, we will be having a presentation on that and also, which is the other one? You make my minutes running out. Huh? Oh, yes, we'll be having um, <clears throat> nutrition and health attention that will be paid. So all those who have pain and, and if you have other issues, medical and so on, there will be um, our medical team here that will be ready to check on your vitals and probably help um, write a prescription for free. So save that $10,000 for the doctor visit, put it in the offering, and get some free checkup on Thursday. May God continue to bless us all in Jesus' name. Bless you. He, he, he speaks like a counselor. Uh, you, you, um, perhaps if he had proceeded to try to get those doctor bills, he'd have done a great job right now. <laughs> Come on, let's put our hands together for the reports that we have had so far. God bless you. All right, um, just to also, I know some persons that saw a train um, technical team has been brought to our attention that there seem to be no Zoom link. I don't know if you're aware of it. Oh, it has improved, please. I know you're having challenges that you did not manufacture. Uh, so I'll just bring it to your attention. Also, we want to welcome also some of our brethren who live up north who are also very much a part of the convention. Minis minis missionary, rather. Heather Allen. God bless you. Lady Cuff, Lady Morden Cuff. And Lady Powell. God bless you, God bless you. I don't know if Minister Glaives is in. 
No, he's not here at the moment. All right, God bless you. Uh, I am looking for my contingent from Flint River. All right. But we're going to have a praise break. I see you itching for a praise break. I know Shiloh by now, you know. And we are going to go up into the cool hills of Middleton. Yes. And we are going to ask Evangelist Paula Brown to come and to conduct. Uh, don't you want a praise break? I, I see you just sit on there and some people say, well, just reports, reports, reports. But we're going to give you a chance to change your posture, to put those hands together, to rock your come on, and we're going to praise God. Is that all right? And so Evangelist Paul are from up in the beautiful hills of St. Andrew, a place called Middleton. High, high country in the Blue Mountain Range. She's going to come and do the praise break for us. Let us praise Jesus! Come on, we shout the praise! Amen. Praise Him. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the Comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the Comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. You can tell the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the Comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nation about that. Tell them Jesus has come. Tell them that the Comforter has come. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. Let's praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Praise Jesus. There's a song by Maria Providence. Praise Jesus. Anybody know that song? Yeah. It's No, not that one. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let's praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. My feet I am anointed. Praise the name of Jesus. The, this was take this took me by surprise and the song I have in mind is just not coming. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh bless God. Oh praise the name of Jesus. Can we stand and praise Jesus today? Bless the name of Jesus. When he begins to fight you, then you will fight back. Let's praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let us stand and praise Jesus. Lift your hand and praise God. Let's bless the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised and there's no God beside him. Let's praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Your biggest voice. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah! Oh, bless your name. Oh, bless your name. All right. I can take two testimonies until my song comes in Jesus' name. Can I get one? Just one from the choir. Somebody has a praise. Praise the name of Jesus. No one has a praise. Come on. salvation. Praise the name of Jesus. Clap your hands all ye people. Let you I don't know what you come to do but I come to praise the Lord. Clap your hands all ye people. Don't 
Bless the name of Jesus. Just one testimony from this side. Just one. Rider. That's why I'm here today. Jesus bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. My song is here. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Come on. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Come on, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah, sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah, come on, sing praises unto God, sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Come on, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. For He Life in praise when there is trouble in your life in praise it. Oh yeah, when trouble in your life in praise it. When trouble in your life in praise it. Hallelujah. Oh, for God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. bless you. All right. I see you're getting all ready to go. We have some, should I call them, elder statesmen in our midst who are here today and I know that it might be a little bit challenging for them to be during, to be with us during the full duration of our convention. I speak of Bishop Alvin Smith out of Magotty and Pastor Samuel Shaw out of Johns Hall, although he looks much younger than our good friend Bishop Smith. Pastors, but I don't know how to draw a jacket tail. So I've just got to ask you to come and to give us 
uh, short greetings. Come, Bishop Smith. He's going to come first. And as he comes to this beautiful pulpit, this pulpit was made and donated by Minister Joseph and Leeford Salmon. So Hanbury have its own pulpit. Come on, let's put our hands together for them, please. God bless them, God bless them, God bless them. Thank you very much, Elder Jordan. Let me greet my presiding bishop, Bishop Paul, and everyone that named by Shiloh that sit here this afternoon. Let me greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Time would fail me to bring out everybody's name. But I just want to tell you that I am alive and doing well. It did not please the Lord to take me away from you. It pleased my Lord to see you another time. In spite of many deluges, in spite of many things that happened, my good friends, them had gone, and I have a dialogue with my God and say, Lord, why I am here. But thanks be to God, he helped me here for some purpose. I am here to witness how good God is. Woo! I am here to witness it, that God have a special love for me. Some would look and say, where well, don't die? What I'm here doing, but God has a purpose for me. And the purpose is not yet finished. So I am pleased to see my great men them that stand up in Shiloh. Oh, Jacob prophesy that Shiloh will come and gather his people, hallelujah, from under the sun. And one thing I am glad about, I am in Shiloh gathering. I, I get many fight, but I can say the fate of our fathers Living still, in spite of dungeon, hallelujah, fire and sword. I fight dead man, I fight life man. But I am still going through the fight, and I will never give up until death. Pray for me in Jesus' name. While, hold a second, just sit a minute. While Pastor Shaw is waiting, we have certainly the senior of seniors in our midst, Pastor Anderson from Melrose. She is all of 95 years old. We are going to take a quick, a quick greetings from her. Please stand. I, I, did, I won't make you walk all the way up there. Please stand. Just stand and greet the convention. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Great things he had done. He's wonderful. He's altogether lovely. He's mighty. He's great. Today I am alive to see the plan of my father who has gone to sleep. I am happy and I'm praying to God to keep me safe and secure in the spirit that when we shall cross over Jordan and meet in the presence
presence of the Lord God Almighty. If it is possible, I'll be able to tell him, so we have made it. God is a good God. I love him. He cares for us. And whatever he plans, it must be done. This is the work of the Lord God Almighty. May God bless the young who are coming up and taking up the battle. May God keep you. May God help you to be faithful and stand fast in the liberty where God has set you free that you will not be entangled in the yoke of bondage that when the Lord God Almighty shall put in his appearance all will be in the number. Keep saved in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. God bless you. Had it not been for the place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for the man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Had it not been for the place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for the man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Let me hear the church praise the name of Jesus. Shout that lovely name one more time. Jesus, hallelujah. The name that came to save us from our sins. I am indeed happy to be in this, uh, the first anniversary of Shiloh. Giving God thanks for sparing my life to see even today. The writer declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Just want to greet our president, Bishop Farr, the assistant president, Bishop Andrews, all the other pastors on the platform, on the audience, and wherever you are, the brethren all together, children, visiting friends. I have no other name to greet you in but the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Surely he came on the scene over 2,000 years ago, and because we were predestined, here we are today, lifting up his name. He said in his own words, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And here I am today, give it God thanks for spending my life to see even now, not getting any younger, but I'm not giving up. Because I believe that the payday is at the end. And so I just want to make sure that I press along in God's own way. And the hotter the battle, the sweeter will be the victory. So many things are happening around us today that is telling us that the end is there. And ever since we were born, we heard that Jesus is coming again. It is evident that he is not too far now because of the wars and the turmoils and the frustration that is upon our land even in the church of that you wonder why but brother peter exhort his audience at pentecost to save themselves from this untoward generation and my purpose and aim is to save myself and to save those that will hear me and i hope that that is the desire for all of us today and as we go along in shiloh let us make sure they want that we have a pure heart. We are encouraged that we should love evil enemies, to do good to all those who hate us and despitefully use us and say all manner of evil against us. And to do that, it takes much. It takes a sacrifice. It takes a dedicated life. And I want to make sure that I prioritize Jesus as I go from day to day because he is our example. Lord bless you, young people. I say to you, hold on. Better is on the floor. Never give in. I said to my folks that I'm not as old as I am. Stay on the farm because the longer you serve him, 
the streets are healthy. And I just hope that those who are here this, in this convention as young persons will take a grip and leave here stronger than when you came because that's supposed to be our purpose. We should be living stronger and higher as we go from the day. Pray my strength. My ambition is to go the last mile of the way. And whatever I can do to elevate the kingdom of God, I am going to do it from the bottom of my heart. Because what I really want here at the end of the day is well done. Though good and faithful servant. And I believe that all of us want to hear that. But to, take, to get to that point, it takes everything out of you. You have to be a sacrifice. Jesus made himself a complete sacrifice on Calvary. To save you and I. And at the end of the day, he said it is finished. Man's redemption is paid. And the words that encourages me in his sufferings is when he cried, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Had it not been for that forgiving spirit, none of us would have existed today. The Lord bless you that you cherish the old red cross so we will exchange it someday for our crown. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh, All these, our brothers and sisters that have spoken, are, with the exception of Pastor Anderson, way up in their 80s, you know. You see the batting well. I am so glad I've got salvation in time. I am so glad I've got salvation in time. I am so glad I've got salvation in time. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, what oh, shall I, I do? do? I am so glad. Hush. Somebody's calling my name. Hush. Hush. Somebody's, Somebody's calling my name. Hush. Hush. Somebody's calling my name. in time I am so glad I've got salvation in time oh my lord oh my lord what shall I let's put our hands together come on I am so glad I've got salvation in time come on shout out oh I've got salvation in time I am so glad I've got salvation in time Convention and followed by Pastor Roslyn Johnson, and then we return to regular programming. Thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God. It is indeed a wonderful privilege for me to be here this point of hour. Praise the name of Jesus. I just want to give God thanks. I just want to give Him all hallelujah that i have myself hallelujah for what he has done for me praise the name of jesus let's call some great men hallelujah and some great women glory to god hallelujah that the lord has provided for us to lead shiloh hallelujah glory to god 
Hallelujah to run with the button. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to lead Shiloh to victory. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am happy. I am so happy that I can hardly contain myself to see what Shiloh is today. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The people are indeed happy. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God because they see what they wanted to see and they hear what they wanted to hear. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We no longer have to run from the sun and the rain. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are happy indeed. And I'm saying to us, let us work wholeheartedly with our leaders. Hallelujah. So that, hallelujah, they can run the race. Hallelujah. And we all can win the victory. Glory to God. This is a win-win for all of us. Not just for one, but for all of us. Hallelujah. So let's give Jesus our all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And put what we have. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Monetary. Let us give generously. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we can see that it is needed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And whatever else our work. Praise the name of Jesus so that the building, hallelujah, will be finished and we will be more happier. And God, hallelujah, will be happy with the work that has been done. God bless you as we continue to work for him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cinderella. Pastor Rosalind. These are senior citizens, you know. They may look young and sprightly, but I tell you, they are senior, senior citizens. <laughs> Ladies don't like you to talk their ages, so I won't. <laughs> Praise Jesus everywhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just lift those hands and voices and shout, Hallelujah. Yeah. Great things the Lord has done for us. At this time, protocol observe. But let me extend greeting to the restroom, to the choir, to all God's wonderful people, my father's children. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Giving God thanks to be in this convention, the 81st Convention of the Shiloh Apostolic Church. God has taken us from a mighty long way, many rivers. He is working with us, and today, as I looked around and saw it, King Jesus himself said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we give him thanks that he is the king of our church, Shiloh, the Shiloh organization, and that he is leading us to victory. Let us just work together as the theme of our song used to say, to the work, to the work, we are servants of God. We are going to fight because we know that, as the song said then, forward still tis Jehovah's will, as the billows dash and sway, with a conquering thread we are going to push ahead. And all the sea, the Red Sea, all the Jordan, shall roll away. God bless you. Enjoy convention in Jesus' name. Thank you. Another of the senior citizens, and um, I am not sure she can come up, so we'll take the microphone to her. All right. Thank you. All of my ministers, officers, my lovely saints, and if friends are here, greetings in Jesus' name. I am Pastor Zilla Bauban from the Coffridge Shiloh Apostolic Church. Heaven bless you. Enjoy your convention. And please pray for me.
Praise Jesus. Praise him one more time. I found his grace. It's all complete. He supplied all my need. Today I'm happy to be in the presence of God and his blessed brethren, worshiping the holy God who have called us from the rudiment of sin and have given us this wonderful chance, amen, for entering into his kingdom, giving his life, amen. God bless you today as we go on from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Shiloh is moving from victory unto victory. It's good to be here. It's good to know that Shiloh is standing. It's a blessing to look and see the wonderful people of God. I've never seen Shiloh with so much ministers. I've never seen so much officers. I've never seen, oh God, have mercy. God is good. God is good. We're shouting. Brethren, let us shout for joy. Shout for victory. Shiloh is moving from lower to higher. Heaven bless you in Jesus' name. These are all golden girls. Eighty hold him. And we thank God for them. Let's put our hands together for these wonderful, wonderful mothers and fathers. Unsung heroes, we call them. And they, these folks, many of them have come to convention year after year. Some of them have never really graced the stage. But we thank God that we were able to accommodate them today. Amen. I hope we haven't left anybody out. But if you notice, the focus is 80 and upwards. So if you're under that, you don't qualify. Right? It is. In the past, I told my good friend, Pastor Everton Charlton, that I'll, I'll do a head white, him not qualify. He's not in that list. <laughs> All right, the Lord bless you. All right, so we're going to go back to our reports, and we will have the, the report that will be done by Pastor Paul Channer, and that is the uh, Convention Center Redevelopment Committee. And then we will have the one that a lot of church people like to hear about, uh, the treasurer's report, uh, Pastor uh, Frank, the financial report, if you prefer, and they will come in that order. God bless you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Praise Jesus, everybody. Come on, can we praise Jesus? One more time. Amen. Praise God. Let me greet everyone in the precious name of Jesus. And I know that um, all protocols observed, but we um, I have to say greetings to the presiding bishop and to congratulate him on his um, recent installation and the team that is working with him. We know that we are committed to um, the work of the Lord. And he knows that we are behind him 100%. And we will see um, to it that his, his, his plans and his vision are carried out. Amen? So we are not doing it for our glory. We are doing it for the glory of God. And so um, we will stand up behind him as the scripture exhorts us to um, follow after those who stand for Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. Um, when I was a little boy in the church in Swaby's Hope, um, I had a grand uncle who was a deacon, but he was a good preacher and illustrator. And he tells us that um, when he was in World War II, rather young, I think it's World War II, but when you put the soldiers on parade in the morning, you might find a soldier with um, bandy leg or not knee. But he says if a soldier has a bandy leg and stands like this, then all the other soldiers must stand up the same way. Because if when inspection time comes, whoever is inspecting the troop sees one man out of place, they are going to be mad with him, even if he's a knock name have. Huh? So 
everybody gets behind that man and they are protecting him because they are in one army. And so um, we, we follow him as he follows Christ. Amen. Praise God. All right. So I'm reporting on the Hanbury Development um, Subcommittee. As you know, we were mandated to work on the convention center to bring it up to, to speed, to be able to conduct the different meetings that we normally conduct within our church organization. And let me tell you, we have been working under severe pressure to carry out this mandate. We weren't pressured by any outside forces. The pressure was within because we had that um, commitment to see the task finish. And so once we set out to complete a task, we made sure that the task is completed. And so today we are here to report on the progress of the development team. We work as a, as a team, work as a team. And so one of the first things that we really, really um, attacked when we were given the mandate was the construction of a dorm, an additional dorm on the building to house persons for the, for the convention. The dorm we're speaking about is this one right here. And we're reporting today that the dorm is um, about 98% complete. In fact, in fact, as we, thank you, in fact, as we speak, we are, we are housing over 60 persons in this dorm right now. It's a female dorm, and it's packed to capacity if you go up there uh, to look. So we, we run against time to complete it. And um, Saturday, when the persons start to come in for convention, we, we were not expecting people to come in on Saturday. But then everybody that reported to, to, um, to Hanbury said it is a normal thing that they do. And we, we, we knew it was not normal, a situation that we were dealing with. And so a lot of persons were inconvenienced and some of us were really put under pressure. But we were able to stave off all of the inconvenience and um, we were able to put in some people. We had to get some beds up there. Even Saturday night we were here pulling up beds through the window. Because the beds, are, the, the, the bunk, they are very, very heavy. And to get them up there was really a task. And we didn't even have the hands to do it. But we managed to get the beds up there. And so persons um, were housed. One section that has at least um, two toilets and two shower stalls on this side. We were not able to complete the partitions. The partitions were built. We started to put them in, but we run, a, uh, run out of time, and so we had to leave that section undone. But on the other section where we have um, seven toilets, seven toilets and four shower stores, um, four uh, wash basins, we were able to put in all of that, and I'm sure I don't have a report that they're not functioning that they are at this time functioning. We ran into a little problem when the rain started because the rain was really the test of whether or not we were ready or what we're doing was right. When the rain started, we rec recognized that um, because of the, 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 the decking on top um, is incomplete to a certain extent because we're trying to put a, a, a scantilever over, the, over the, um, the place and it wasn't complete and the water started to run back down on the windows and then run inside and um, at different times uh, Minister Heard who has who has the, the heart of a lion he was there with his team yes go ahead and give him a hand because he deserves it he was there with his team trying to to sort out that problem and to a certain extent the ladies were very very cooperative they call for mops and they call for brooms and cardboard and they call for um, buckets and they were able to, to dry up the water 
and, and spread things over it. And I think if, I don't think you can go up there and, and, and um, because their, their place is private. But when I went up there afterwards, the place was like home. Um, I saw persons bringing little tables and little, and little um, you know, um, snack trays and so on and so on. And they, they had bedside tables and every little thing. So the place looked so, <laughs> I mean, they made themselves, themselves so homely. You know, it's, um, it was as if they were just saying, boy, we want to start something new because COVID locked us out for three years and we're coming back in full force, all right? So the, the dorm is partially complete. With a little tweaking, we can get it um, um, completely ready for another function, all right? So, so um, that was one aspect. So we constructed that dorm. We also worked on um, the, uh, this enclosure. And, and thanks be to God. The test of this was when the showers came. And I think God really organized the rain to fall for this convention to see and to prove to some people that what was done up there was what was supposed to be done. I think the rains were organized for us because let me tell you something. If, if when the rain fell, fell, you had to get up from there and you had to get up from there, then... Ella Charlton, all of us on the, on the development team would have to run because we really, really, um, you know, it was a challenge for us. And we, we had our heart set on it that this would sol solve the problem. And did it solve it? Beautiful. Give God the glory. All right. So uh, we're still, construction is in progress. I think you can ask questions in another session as to where we are going with what we have here, and we can do some explanation. But one of the problems was to solve the, the sun and the, the, the rain from affecting us. And then we went over this side, and I think the solution to the problem was to put two dorms up here and then close out that section up there. And we have done it. We have, we have the, the wall for the second dorm, and so if you give us the funds, we will complete that section, that second dorm, for you to have it for youth convention. So we'd have had two complete dorms um, um, on the building if you give us the funds, because you know that all you need to do is to give us the money, we will work with the money, all right? So there would be a second dorm and the walls, that is this wall on this side is for a second dorm. And we will deck it and then um, that zinc up there is a temporary um, solution. I think um, with the discussion with the team, they wanted to put some glass blocks up there, but that is a medium-term solution. This one is a short-term, or this one is a medium-term, but a long-term solution is to put some beautiful glass blocks in maybe different colors, purple or whatever, so they look very decorative, and maybe a cross in the, in the middle up there, all right? But, um, but that's where we are. So we have solved the problem with the, with the, with the, the elements coming behind us. Is it solved? Is it solved? All right, give God the glory for that. So we, we ha we're not getting any, any sun from here, and we're not getting any um, wet. I think just that little section, somebody was sitting down there um, where Brother Hall, is that Brother Hall? Is standing, and a little um, thing blew through there. But that's all right. Um, that's easy to take care of. It's not a problem. Okay, the, the second, the, 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 the second, um, the second phase, our job task that we were, we, we took on was the refurbishing of the two remaining dorms. We, we took down the, the dorm that was down there and we used quite a lot of material from that to do, to facilitate the decking up there. So they, we, we did a, a big saving in terms of the, the plyboard and the, 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 the lumber that was used up there. So we didn't have to buy that. The other two dorms down there, we had to, we were very conservative in the money that we spent to refurbish them because that is a short-term solution. So chiefly they were rewired and some plumbing work was done and the ceiling of both dorms was, 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 was replaced because they were eaten by Dukans and, um, and um, um, Dukans and Chichi, they call them. All right. So, so we have those dorms um, functioning. The kitchen, as you see it there, 
that one was also very challenging and we were working up to nowhere I think um, some work has been done on it just to get the caterers to come in and have somewhere to to um, to prepare the meals from is not a hundred percent complete but we are getting there and I don't think you have to worry whether or not the food is sanitary because um, the, the caterer is somebody who is very experienced and she wouldn't have you, um, you know, subject to that. So you can, you can rest assured that um, it, is, it is the best that we can get for, at, at this time, but I think that it is good enough. All right? So we are still working on it. It's not going to be a long-term solution because our plan is to have your cafeteria and your kitchen on, on, this, um, on this building. So you won't have to go walk so far for your breakfast and your food. Okay? So while, while, I, while I'm, I'm mentioning the refurbishing of the kitchen, the, the plan that we have is for your, right over here, is for your kitchen and storeroom to be right there, your cafeteria to be there, and at the front we, 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 we have planned that we would have... Uh, I wouldn't call it a tuck shop. I would call it more like a, um, uh, what they call those little buildings that sell haberdashery? Uh, no. Um, uh, all right, a mini mart, right, at the front there. And there's space. If we, have, if we put our cafeteria over there, it would maybe facilitate um, two times the, the number of persons that are here. And many, many persons could be able to see it down there because the space is there for it. But that's a long term. A medium-term solution is not beyond us. If you give us the funds, we'll get it for next year convention. Hello? Hello? Not for you with convention. We'll give it to you for convention next year. All right. We have done some, we have done some uh, quickly because I know I have a limited time. We have done some upgrade to the electricity uh, inside the building. If you know, notice we have eight of these new um, lights. And though they look very small, they are very bright. And the lights were donated um, by Minister Walker in the United States, Minister Cuff and others um, got us these lights. And with the assistance of Brother, Brother Gardner, and other electricians, Brother Atkinson and others, were able to put them up to install them. And last night, I think you saw the, how they function. The place is bright. Hello, you're sleeping? Right. So, so people are interested in what we are doing, and people are thinking ahead of us. So they, 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 they think ahead, and they will call and say, oh, but this place needs some lights. Let me get some. And let me tell you something about the lights. But let me tell you, um, just before I go to the lights, we were also um, working on the nurses' station out there. And though it's, 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 it's incomplete, but because of the time, the partitions were supposed to be put in so that we can separate the, the sick bay from the, the section where the nurse would look at the attendant room or whatever you call it. And we weren't able to, to, to do it. The, 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 the installer started to mark the, the, the place, had the material cut, the partitions cut, but just couldn't get it done. Notwithstanding, it is still functioning because the nurses are there. Sister Chana is spearheading a group of nurses within our organization here. And if somebody falls sick, there is, there is space for you. There are two beautiful hospital beds and those were shipped from the United States about about a month ago there are two wheelchairs I think and some walkers and there's a supply of um, medical supply that is in the in the nurses um, station and that's courtesy of Elder Powell Elder Cuff, um, Pastor Powell, Pastor Cuff, Lady Powell, and Lady Lorraine Nelson, Lady Cuff, right, and um, many, uh, Evangelist Lorraine Nelson, right, supplies. And she, she told us she's taking down her supplies with her 
on the plane and they are going to be here yesterday and the supplies are, are there. So we didn't have to buy anything, technically buy anything to put in there. So if somebody falls sick and we know that you, nobody's going to fall sick because we're under the anointing, but just in case, <laughs> we, 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 we're preparing ourselves. And um, that's what I'm telling you that our people are thinking, they don't, they think ahead of us. They said, nurse's station, oh, nurse's station must have this, it must have that. And they provide it for us because they said, this is our Shiloh. Give them a hand for it. So, for youth convention, the nurse's station will be complete. It has two hospital um, type beds there that if somebody feel a little low, you're not just going to lie down on an ordinary bed. You're going to lie down on a bed that the nurse is just going to touch a little button and it's going to, right on, Brother Powell, it's going to be adjusted either up or down, um, you know, to where you walk and feel and relax. It's not, it's not a cheap bed. The other thing about it is that we, we, I went to Kingston to clear the bed, but I was trying to get the beds, the supplies, sorry, through... Um, a, a new charity that we have. We'll tell you more about that. Um, um, but the charity is just, just started. And we had some problems at custom. And I, I, I spent three days, three separate days at custom, three full days at custom, till finally them get sorry for me. And I was able to clear the, the stuff. But God is good. Because it's an experience... Um, it's an experience for us, and we do it because we are, we are loyal to our organization. We are committed to the organization, and we'll do anything for our church, right? Will we? Amen. All right. We have also been purchasing, purchasing some supplies. So on my trip to Kingston, I was ably assisted by uh, Pastor Simpson and Brother Blake. Right. So when we went to the Kingston, one of the day we went to pick up some mattresses. I'm just putting everything in one, you know. We went to pick up 50 mattresses at um, Macintosh Mattress uh, Supplies in Kingston. So when I went to the wharf and didn't get through, we just run across there. So we didn't come back empty-handed. We came back with 50 brand new um, mattresses. And I might have said it to you before, but out of those, out of those uh, 50 mattresses, they cost 1,118,000 for 50. 1,118,000 for 50 new mattresses. They're not cheap. Right. But out of that, 900,000 was donated by somebody who supports and is a part of the Shiloh Apostolic Church. And she, she gave it as a gift. And I'm just going to read here. It says that the, the purchase of the 50 mattresses is a, um, as, as a pledge is done in the memory of the founding members of the Nine Miles Shiloh Apostolic Church. Give her a hand for that. I don't, she's watching now, but I don't know if she wants me to call her name. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to not um, get myself into trouble. But people like those, as I said before, they are thinking ahead of us. And even before we ask for it, they are thinking that... Even, even, if they are thinking ahead of us. And they're asking it, what do you need? What, what is it that are, they're reminding you that if you're going to house people up there, you're going to need beds. And that's the attitude that we want people to, to take. Don't wait until we come to you and beg you, because I hate begging. Everybody knows that. And I, and I mentioned to one of, a couple of our, our ministers that look here, even this convention, I would hate to see we come up here and pick up offerings, so we're collecting three and four offerings for anything. I know Bishop would, he doesn't like it either. So... We don't want to do that. We think that when, when you come up here and you do what you have to do and you say, God bless you, then you're going to do what God puts on your heart to do. So the same person I'm reminded, um, yesterday she was online and watching and she saw that we were out of benches, um, seats. And she called 
and say, look here, I am staying in the United States and I'm renting a hundred chairs. One hundred chairs. And she called me a while ago and said, the chairs come, but may I ask you to protect it with your life because they are rented. <laughs> so I think they're in that section over there. She said, I don't know what they look like, but please protect them with your life. And I think that is why the chairman was saying this morning, don't take out any of the chairs out here. Don't take them to the dorm. Don't take them to the kitchen because they are, they are, they are somebody else's. And we need to, when we deliver them, we don't need to pay. We don't want to pay for any of them. All right? So give her a hand for that. 100 chairs. And lest you think other persons are not like that. I was just called behind there a while ago. And another person says, um, Brother Chana, you're short of chairs. I am renting another 100 chairs if you need them. Um, Brother, Brother Elder Pastor Charlton has 100 chairs on standby just in case we need them, but they would be paid for by one of our own members. So that's what I'm telling you, that people just look on the need and they get at it. All right, I'm coming down. So we, we, when we went into Kingston the second day, we didn't, or the third day, we didn't come out empty because we drove at, um, yes, the, the second day, we went, and, we went um, shopping and we were able to, through the organization, purchase three desks for the office. So the secretary now has a desk and a, and a, and a, and a beautiful chair and the treasurer now has a desk with drawers and a beautiful chair. Um, and also, the nurse's station has a desk and a chair purchased um, at a cost of over 300000 um, 300, but the additional 100, 116000 was contributed by the Malt and Shiloh Apostolic Church. So the total bill was 316000 And God is always good. When I went into Kingston at the place Campbell's on, on Don Robin Avenue, when I stepped in, the person that I was dealing with, I recognized was somebody from Sunday school at um, Linda's Road. I ran in there and I saw her sat at the desk, but I said, I know this lady. And she was wondering how I knew her, because that is over maybe 30 years ago. But I remember her name and everything, and we had a good chat. And by the time I get out, out, out there, I was able to, she, she with the, the charity, um, the charity the, um, documents that we had, she was, she was um, able to, to write off a, a GCT of, I think, over $60,000. Right in that office. So Brother Bowes, <laughs> she said, I asked her which church she goes. She said, um, um, Faith Tabernacle. So I said, I don't know you. And she said, no, is Bishop Lance Reed is my pastor. <laughs> and so the late Bishop Reed is her pastor because she doesn't really worship there, but she's from Linders Road. And she was proud to say that she's from Linders Road. And Bishop Reed is our pastor, right? So we were able to get um, those supplies. We were able to get one four-drawer cabinet. And we were able to also get um, two stationary cabinets. If you look in the, in the nurse's station and in the secretary's office, you will see that. Um, so we got additional chairs. So those supplies are long-term. And we pray that um, they will last for some time. All right, quickly, I'm coming down. We are, we're also able to, in our construction um, thing, to put in some gates to, at, the, at, the, at the front gates, we're able to put some temporary um, gates so we can close out um, traffic. We can close out pedestrian, but we can close out traffic. And the other one at the back will be done after convention. So by you come back for youth convention, there will be a gate at the back. So when we have convention and people go off, um, in the night, 12 o'clock, we will lock all the gates so no true traffic will, will, will get on the compound. So that will provide a level of um, security. But for right now, those gates can be closed um, so that um, we prevent drive through traffic, traffic. And finally, our projection is to complete the second dorm as soon as the funds are, we have the funds, that is the second dorm up there. Um, we, we also want to cover that span of the roof over there. That span, you're looking? Right. 
We have the estimate for each span. There are five spans, and we have an estimate right now of five, um, $3 million for one span, at least $3 million for one span. The prices will fluctuate if we take a long time. There are five of them there, and to put up the, 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 the purlins and the, the rafters um, will cost us $3 million for one, and there are five of them, so that would be five times three, 15. So 15 million will complete that. And if you give us those funds, that can be done in a, in a, in a short period of time. Yes, thank you very much. So as I said before, there are five spans and each span is $3 million. I know that some persons in Shiloh are well endowed with um, the blessings of the Lord. And so a couple of them, they're pointing on some people over here, you know. But, um, um, and some of you down there could just say to us, I have $3.1 million and I'm going to put up a span. Honestly, I'm not joking. Um, and then we'll get it done for you in a short period of time. If you notice when the rain fell yesterday, the water off that ceiling falls back on the concrete and then run across. We were trying to put gutters up there, but it was beyond us in terms of, um, it, can, it can be done, but the, 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 it, was, it was very high. And to, to get the, what do you call them again? The scaffolding up there would have been a little too difficult for us. And so we couldn't put the gutters up there to keep the, the, the rain off. But if you work on that and you give us um, $15 million short term, we'll, be, we'll have it covered. Um, so finally, we, we really want, as, you, as we mentioned, to have a proper kitchen, proper cafeteria, and your... And your, your um, Mini Mart at the front there. I don't want to call it tuck shop because when you put that in, you'll have enough space to have a little walk-in store where when you come to convention, anything that you leave at home, you'll go down there and pick it up. Anything you leave at home, even a dress, you'll be able to, to, um, to, to purchase. Of course, that's our vision. And it has, we have space down there. We have sufficient space. Down. Space is not a problem. So we'll get that done for you as soon as the Lord blesses you and you bless um, the work of God. So if you go down to the talk shop, and we are, we are growing, you know, if you go down to the talk shop, another person just look at it and say, we can't use them old fridge in there. And Saturday, I think we were down here, and the person called and sent in two um, display coolers. You see them? Those two display coolers. Huh? The bigger one is coming. All right, so those two coolers are temporary, I understand. The bigger one, the display coolers are going to come, but the talk shop small. There was a fridge in there that we, uh, another cooler that was in there, and when we plug it in the other day, we realized that it's not working, and we have to take it out. It's not working. We have to maybe get it. Two of them were, 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 were um, donated. And as um, Ella Charlton said a while ago, the bigger one is coming, all right? Um, finally, we had to do some purchases too because, be, because of COVID, one gas stove and one standing fridge. Therefore, the organization purchased with the funds that you um, donate to us. And so that concludes the, the report for the, for the development team. I want to stand here and without water in my mouth, as they say, give thanks to the team, to the team, in particular, Deacon Hurd. There are members of the team, a lot of members of the team, and we thank them, we thank them wholeheartedly, but this gentleman who leave his own business and, and is, if I pass down here, um, any time of the day, I pass down here, and I pass out here almost every day. He's here before me. And a lot of times when I drive out in the evening sometime, 
later leave him here. And I make joke about him. That sister Ali, I'm going to pack him bag and send him out. Make him come live down here. And him said, no such luck. Because when she pack the bag, <laughs> she put food and things in it. That means <laughs> she not send him, him away. And we want to bless her for that. Allowing him to do the work of the Lord. So we give her a hand for that. But um, he, has been, he has been doing a great job. And it's under pressure that, that, that we want to also thank the, the work team. The work team. There is an, a team of gentlemen that, he, that works with him. Some of them, he took them from his own business and brought them down here. And I tell you, they, they work night and day. I, 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 I was touched the other night when one of the gentlemen, Sister Chana, came down here and saw him sit down, all face down. And she went over to him to ask him what was wrong. And he said, he's tired, he's too tired, he can't do anything more. And the big man just burst out into tears. Honestly, he started to cry. He was, he was just... So sometimes people come and they see these things and they don't understand what goes on to make it the way it is. You come and you see the finished product, but you don't understand. That is a short period of time. How many months since last year, October till now? We work these things, you know, you have to put scaffolding to go up there. And it's not an easy thing if you don't fix the scaffolding properly, then you're dead to get up there to put on those purlins. So it's not something that you just come and take up two sheets of zinc and just go up there. The zinc, one of those sheets of zinc is 30 foot long, 30. So you can't just take it up and push it up, give somebody like that. It has to be man, uh, maneuvered in a particular way. So we want to give God thanks for the workers. If they are here or you are connected to them, just tell them that we are grateful for the work that they have put in. I'm sure Brother Heard will pass it on to them. But to the team, again, we say thank you very much. It, 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 if, it, if it wasn't for teamwork, it couldn't be done. As I said, teamwork, make the dream work. So God bless you all for your contributions. I want to recognize some people who have been, apart from sending in contributions directly to the, the, um, the, the organization, some persons have been sending contributions to, um, to the, the development team. And we will sort that out in a, in, a, in, a, in a while, but we had to spend some money too because if we are down here and something goes wrong, we can't run to the bank. We have to, so we have been spending um, not a lot of the money, but we have been spending, myself chiefly, some of the money that we get as donation. And we want to thank some people. They don't want the names to be, um, to be, to be called, but we have to thank them um, from different churches too. So some of the churches have been sending directly to the organization, and a couple of persons have been giving contributions. So we have contributions from some persons. Um, I don't know if I should mention those names, but I want to acknowledge the, the contributions. I don't know if I should take the chance and call names and so on. But in particular, um, the Brooks family from Stephen Run, um, she just came to me and said, Brother Chana, I hear you wanted something. And I went and I talked to members of my family. And I collect a little bit of money. I don't know if it will be enough, but I mean, if it, if it's, if it's you know, can help. But and when, she, when she gave me an envelope, it was 89,000 Jamaican dollars. And she wasn't, she wasn't doing it on behalf of Stephen Runs because Stephen Runs and um, Pastor Brooks came in with a $40,000 donation. We have Sister Pauline Palmer, a 25000 We have Content Shiloh Apostolic, 32000 We have Evangelist Violet Johnson. I don't know if she said yes, I'll um, say her contribution. Go ahead. All right. Because sometimes some people pull something out of their nest egg and give it to the work of the Lord and they don't want you to call their name. Because you have some family, you know, they sit down one side and say, oh, so I have money. I'm going to give it to church. I'm going to give them no more because they take to give church. But sitting down here, she's on a wheelchair down there. And she called me and she said, look here, may I, may I, may I invest into the ministry? And if, if I tell you what she, what she invested, 
And after she invested that sum, she put 10 more thousand on it and said, this is something like tax. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if I should call the, the, the figure. All right, she gave me $110,000 towards the world. And let me tell you, as soon as she gave it to me, I sent somebody up there to collect it as their salary for some work that was done down here. So it, just passed, it didn't come into my hand. It went into somebody else's hand who was doing the work down here. And finally, Sister Pamela Williams um, from uh, Crooked River, right, $35,000. And she said she made a pledge that she's going to hand in today. And there are other persons, um, um, Lady, Lady Johnson's um, granddaughter, we have four, is it 400 US dollars from them um, to the work of the ministry. And as I said before, that's not the, contribu the, the regular contribution. The chairman, the, the vice um, president, assistant president, and the treasurer also have contributions that come directly to the organization. So we are, Elder Charlton said that um, things are going to come into this place like what Hiram the king did to to Solomon or David, to David. So David said, stop now. We can't manage it too much. We have enough to build the temple. May God bless you as you continue to contribute to the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, excuse me for the extended um, time, but you, we just have to do it because the, person, the people, I think they want a report as to what we are doing and how we're doing it. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. That was a comprehensive report. Let's put our hands together, please. <laughs> Sister Sandra Hunt from New York is the one that has been contributing with the mattresses and even with the chairs this morning. And she extends herself that some of the days she makes sure she purchases and sends lunch for the men who are at work here. Awesome, awesome. Treasurer's report is next. Isn't God good? Isn't God wonderful? Isn't he awesome? Amen. God is working his purposes out. It is God's church. And he can take care of his church, his bride. And so we give God thanks for the report from the development committee. Put your hands together for Pastor Chana and the team. <laughs> Amen. They have done exceptionally well given the short time that they have to get things ready for this convention. And I know you'll forgive them if I'm still waiting on invoices and so forth to make sure my report is up to date. So we'll get that done. But we will forgive them, right Bishop? Yes. All right. Just want to bring you greetings from my pastor, Bishop Corley. I know the protocols have already passed, but it would be remiss of me not to remind this August body that Bishop Austin Corley is still alive and well and pushing into 96 years old next month if the Lord tarries. But while I was back there and listening to the Golden Ages section, I said to Minister Henry in the office today that I need to know what these persons are taking to let them look so young. But I was talking to a younger version, so I need to speak with Pastor Anderson at 95 and still doing well. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. We give God thanks for you all. Amen. And we know that God has great plans for the Shiloh Apostolic Church of Jamaica under the leadership of our presiding bishop, Bishop Delroy Foyer. The Shiloh Apostolic Church of Jamaica income statement for the year ended 31st March 2023. The income thus far that have come to my office in gathering fund and offering $3,482,544. Go ahead and applaud. That's in gathering 
tipping into almost $3.5 million from 42 churches. Go ahead and applaud the churches. That's quite an achievement. And the building fund so far that have come to my office, $2,211,737. The tithes from the presiding bishop far that he has contributed to the project here, $844,826. Coming out of our Ash Wednesday Conference 2023, $229,440. And our income from our last general convention, general convention 2022, is $3,219,761. Income stands at $9,988,308. But I imagine Pastor Chano and his team has been sending us a lot of bills, right, Bishop? <laughs> a lot of bills. And so the utilities bill for this period, $442,950. $7. We had to pay service fees of $20,000. And the Hanbury project bills that have come to my office so far amounts to $6,148,949.08. I know there are more coming. And our benevolent fund, $60,000. Sundry expenses, 23,500. In gathering expenses, $202,750. And we were able to settle with Mr. Moat, $1,189,000. And we have purchased three renter kill, sorry, yes, renter kill, $12,075. Thank you. And we have paid over to Flojum lawyers $65,750. Our in-gathering expense stands at $202,750. And our programs, so far you have been getting some lovely programs, right? Right, it cost the organization so far $46,350. And our general convention expenses amounted to $1,694,175. We are a bit in the, on the side of the deficit of which you can see the work that has been going on and has been taking a lot. And so I concur with Pastor Channer that we need some more donations. We need some more funds coming in. And so we stand at $119,873.81 deficit. And I know there will be other bills coming as well as other donations from the development committee. Our bank account stands at $1,078,274.26. I know that will add some zeros in the near future. We need some more zeros on that. Zeros are placeholders, but it can do great if we get some more zeros on that. God bless you. Thank you very much. Over to our chairman at this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's put our hands together for all the reports, please. You know, um, there are those who will ask 
And some of our brethren would perhaps prefer to say we should sing and clap and preach all day. But it is important that when you send your contribution, you hear and know about it. I think that will motivate you to give even more. And so we are trying to be as transparent as is humanly possible. Because at the end of the day, it's your funds. It's your funds. So it is only fit, right, and good that we make sure we acknowledge, firstly, your contributions, and secondly, we inform you how your contributions are being used. We also want to thank the Adams family for the contribution of the refrigerators. God bless them. God bless them. <laughs> Welcome, Deacon Winton Wife from the Brooklyn Assembly in New York. God bless you. We are happy to have you. And at this point, we just want to move a motion for the adoption of the reports. Please and thanks. We move a motion for the... I second the motion. Uh, moved by Pastor Everton Charlton and seconded by our Vice President, Bishop Kingsley Andrews. And um, if you are uncomfortable or not clear with anything that you heard today, of course, you'll be given the opportunity to ask, perhaps... If you don't get a chance in this convention, you can ask um, the relevant persons, because sometimes you may want to give what you're not so clear. So we are willing to provide you with the clarity that is necessary. The Lord has brought us this far, and we are confident that he will take us higher still. All right, now after hearing all that you have heard, the pocketbooks and this. The standout, of course, among the musicians is our brother who is on the saxophone. Give us a note. Give us a note. Give us a note. A, give, us, give us a note. Listen good for the note. Wait. Go ahead. All right. When, when, when Bishop Donald Smith passed on, we had no clue that we would have had a replacement so early. Come on, let's put our hands together for our young. And I understand he got the Holy Ghost this morning. Woo! God is good. All right. And so the ushers will come forward at this time as the offering. Um, I was in the process of saying, you know, the choirsters, my daughters sing with the choir. And some nights, Friday night, we, we must also tip our hats to Sister Laverne coming from Spanish Town after work on a Friday to conduct the, the practices. And also, so many members of the choir who work hard have jobs, and some of them are studying, and they make themselves available to come to practice and get home some bad hours in the nights. Let's give them a good one. Come on, please. Thank you. Thank you. We really, 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 really appreciate them. And to understand, the offering will be given and received as we will have the ministry of the choir. God bless them as they come in Jesus' name. All right, and we are going to be marching today from top to bottom. All right, is that all right? Okay, thank you very much.
Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Please stand everywhere and we have the blessing of the offering at this time. One of our deacons, our ministers there. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you one more time again, my God, for your goodness, for your love and your mercy towards us, your people. Lord, as I have been collected this offering from your people, I pronounce a blessing upon them. Bless the offering as we look to you, dear Lord, and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Just before I get to the next item on the agenda, there is something that I left out this morning. Just an apology to the persons who are on that male dorm over there that we were running out of space and we had to house some of our ladies in that dorm. Um, we really had an overflowing of the persons at convention and um, some persons have been inconvenienced and we just want to let them know that um, we are working on getting some extra beds today. I think uh, we should have them, well, let me keep our fingers crossed. Uh, they should be here any time now because we know that some persons had a bad night. They didn't have any bed because we are totally out of beds. And so we had to divide that dorm down there into two sections. Some of you might not know. Put the ladies on one side, the men on one side. And we know that they are inconvenienced in terms of the, the conveniences, the bathroom facilities, but we are trying to work out something for them. And they have been helping themselves and cooperating nicely because they, they, they find different um, um, unconventional mean, means to have their bath and um, do other, other, other functions. Um, so we, we really commend you and we ask you to continue to be patient. We are all in this thing together, but God is our leader. Amen? Come on, can we shout a hallelujah? Can we say thank you, Jesus? Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. There's an item on our program which we'll use to include today's um, program, and that is called the Presidential Address. And so at this time, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's my sincerest pleasure in presenting to you the President. God bless you as we accept him in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. God bless you, my student. Well, let me check my time. All right. <laughs> Greetings to the bishops on the form, pastors, other ministers, officers, precious saints, our beautiful choir, all of you lovely, wonderful people in this building, or including our children and our visitors, I greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I stand in memory of our late president, as I mentioned yesterday, the farmers, Bishop C.C. Walsh, Bishop Thomas Germain, Bishop L.H. Walsh, and uh, Bishop Stanley Borbank. Last year we had going, had Bishop Hallin, Bishop Donald Smith, Bishop Lance Reed, and as was mentioned, Pastor Small. And uh, each time I hear that title, my mind is on that person. I can't get used to it. But I am standing here in their labor, humbling myself and doing what the Lord bids me to do. And uh, as you have heard the reports, the financial reports, and I am respectfully asking that in all of the churches, 
under our umbrella, this is done. If you should ask anybody in my in Port Antonio, they are accustomed to that. Whether you want to hear it or not, you are going to hear it because this is what how it goes. And I don't angle money more than what is given to me. Treasurer is the person in charge, ask them any question. And what we do is we communicate. Bishop Andrews would never get a bill without he sent me the bill to say, what say you? The treasurer is not going to do anything until there's a, a, an approval and we work together as a team. The matter can't be too urgent that it has to be I. I must can call Bishop Andrews. I must can call Pastor Swanson so and say, what do you think? And even if what they think is not what the same thing I am thinking, I go along with the majority. Because at the end of the day, it's we, 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 not I. I want to give a lot of thanks for, as you have heard, and I won't go over, but there is an executive committee. So what Pastor Bowes did is the, is the secretary of that committee. I am the chair for that committee. I didn't want you, but the committee pressured me that I should chair the executive committee. And he mentioned the names. So the committee meets, and he, he, they told you how many times we met for the year, online and face to face. Because after we finish this convention, we are going to meet to do uh, look at our objectives if they were met. What went right or what went wrong and what needs to be adjusted. And I hasten to say, in my mind, I've been talking quietly by the Lord Charis, whoever is, the once the Lord Charis and the church is carrying on, there will be a, a convention housing committee that you will be asked to call ahead of time how many are coming and they know where and, and so on. And one of the drawbacks is that we had booked, we had plans to use the Kendall camp for the dorms in addition to ours. But something went wrong and that was not able to materialize. But we put a look at everything before our objectives. And we are going to examine now to see if our objectives were met and what are the things that we could have done differently. That's how it is done. I want to say, as was mentioned before, that we have uh, passed a resolution that whoever sits in an elected office, whether president, vice, and all the other persons, three years. And after three years, you face the electorate again. If you have done well and they want, they can re-elect you. If not, you elect somebody else. And no bones broken. Okay? That is what is planned and put on paper as was read by you. Our plans, we want to go forward, but we are treading cautiously and we are doing things that are on a priority basis. We want to have the office, the Shiloh Apostolic national office on this premises. 
staffed by our brethren. So that when you have an inquiry or whatever you call the number, somebody answers and I'm in Portland, they relate to me or relate to the building committee or relate to whoever it is. And we operate like that. And uh, you know the days when the offices are open and will be there and all of that. We also want to put in place middle management. So each church will have an overseer or a group of churches having an overseer who will do plan your events together. And the late Pastor Roderick Smith started it, you know. But it died. That all of us in the same region, we have our campaign, our rallies, whatever we do have. At different times, we support each other and we work in that order. We also want to, we have discussed it, we are going to be drafting some church reporting forms and they'll be sent to you and each church is, will be asked at, in the interim, now, afterwards we'll be, I will be asking you, take a decision as to how many times per year it should be done so that we can know your status, your problems, your joys and your sorrows. So that not only are we going to build the center, but we know it is the churches that build the center. So we have to start at the churches. Look at our church buildings. Look at who needs this and who needs that. Ideas, how we can help to include those abroad. What we can do differently. And how that for the benefit of our precious brethren. And what was mentioned earlier for Thursday is not a mistake or anything. We sat and planned that we want that day to be a special day whereby you are, uh, are fed with knowledge of nutrition and health and up job opportunities, estate planning, and other things. So, and then you can go to your different assemblies and replicate this as is done in some jurisdiction. But we want it to be common knowledge. When we get the reports and study them, then we will make visits and talk to the brethren and help to see how they are doing and how things can be done different Lee. Uh, time is going, but just bear with me a little bit. Um, since we, last year when I was in an acting position, all of us mostly were, but I am giving you a report of what I did, or some of what I did during that year. I visited, as was mentioned before, Mango Valley, and we had a day of fellowship there. A wonderful day it was with Pastor Anderson and Saints, and about 30 of us went from Port Antonio to Mango Valley, and we worshiped, ate, drank, and everything went well. Also, went to Orton Court, a, a team of us from Port Antonio, they were there at Orton Court. Bishop Andrews went there too, um, attended youth convention, yes. Also, we uh, visited memorial service for the late Pastor Lowe at Mount Prospect. Also, um, we had here Bishop Walsh's memorial was present. We also did memorial service. I was attended for the late pastor Mark Charlton at Goshen. Uh, also, I was at the relaunch at Anbury, visited Bishop um, Smith 
uh, at Koji Spen prior to his departure, a group of us were at, at, at Wednesday conference. Also, that is this year, funeral for Bishop Reed, visited Bishop Cawley, and at Newton Assembly, I also visited Pastor Simpson at his pastoral anniversary at Prospect, visited Gravel Hill. Gravel Hill, last time I was there was on Good Friday, served Lord's Supper, fasting and all of that. Been there two times on a visit and one time at a funeral at Gravel Hill. Also went to Middleton, up in the hills of St. Andrew where Pastor Paula Brown. Wow. What a wonderful time we had. Also visited Bridgeport, Connecticut at their church anniversary a few weeks ago. All in our year. And not to mention the numerous meetings we had, executive meetings, and the numerous executive committee meetings. And I'm no chicken. I have, I've not attained the 80 odd years yet, but I'm 78, looking at 79. God has been good. God has been good. And when God promised you anything, you can't do it before you get it. I like when God promised me and take long to deliver. Can you not it now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, God has been wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. And if I had my way, but I don't want God vexing me. If I had my way, I said, no, Lord, not so. Not so. But he's God. You know, I remembered, and this is serious. All of us are not going to get everything at the same time. No. I remember when I was a young man in church, uh, there were three brothers only in the young brothers in the church. Three. Two and myself. And one, two migrated. And I took the second one to the airport. I parked my car and I said, Father God, if you give me a little of what you give them, I will stay. So when the children said, Daddy, we will file for you, I said, No, I'm staying. And whatever happens, I will stay. I will stay. And, and I will stay. And I love what I'm doing. Okay? So, you never can tell. Mind where you pray for, you know. And mind where you tell God to say. Because you never forget. All right. Now, we looked at, right, good, at our theme. And I'll be short, as usual. And our theme is the kingdom. The, and I like to point out, definite article. And the teachers know the only definite article in the English language is the word the. And when we see the, it means that there is no other, only one. The kingdom, the child apostolic church, the Lord, the anything at all. Okay? Good. Sometimes we, in talking our, our colloquial language, we speak otherwise, but the. And uh, we want to look at kingdom. And uh, the word of the Lord from Matthew. And we do know that Matthew uses the term kingdom of heaven 
while most of the others say the kingdom of God. Some might be, can be argued that the kingdom of God seems to be broader. But if you study them in technical terms, the person in the context in which they are used, it means the same thing. So then, I'm going to be looking at the that scripture. But I'm going to look, look at it from Matthew chapter um, 5. But before you look at 5, um, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and it reads and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel we look at the word the again the gospel of the kingdom Wow. The gospel of the kingdom. And it went on. That's what he preached. Coming to that. And also, then we look at verse, chap, verse 5 of Matthew. Verse 5 begins with the word and. And as we know, it's a conjunction. And what the conjunction does is to join. So there, it means that Matthew 4 and 5 are connected by the word hand. And here we learn now that Jesus, seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, not the mountain this time, a mountain. Yes. And when he was set, or seated, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. So it gives you the local. It gives you the, the posture of the audience, our body. They were seated. And he taught them. Now, in this teaching, and I'm taking you back, that when Moses was called to lead Israel, shortly after they left out of Egypt, Moses was invited to come to Sinai to receive the Magna Carta to receive his terms of reference, to receive how things are going to be operated because they were under Pharaoh's rule and the name Pharaoh is how they call their king. Right? Pharaoh. So everybody is a Pharaoh. And so now that you, they were not under under Egypt and Pharaoh, and you are now how dear with God, and this is no God Almighty bringing them out of there and bringing them into his kingdom. In his kingdom, and the word kingdom is king's domain or ruled by a king. And there are three types of a monarchy, absolute monarchy, partial monarchy, and governmental monarchy. And we are accustomed to governmental monarchy, but we don't understand absolute monarchy. So they walked out, no little food that they carry, soon finish, the water finish, the shoes on the feet, the clothing, medication, all of these things, but they are under the kingdom of God. God is responsible. 
You don't have to pay taxes. Hey, the king is responsible. You don't have to do this. The king is responsible. All you have to do is to talk to the king. And they could not see the king, but they could see Moses who represented the king. Okay. So Moses got it, and God, he came down and said, God said, God said, not me said, God said to tell you, say, God said. All right, believe them. But look, we, we, we read in the scripture that the 40 years and the shoes never, never get whole or mash up. No shoemaker, no, no PLS shoe store. Wow. No shoes, the clothes. What a God. What a God. Oh, I, I wonder. Then, if you don't go it out, may I know how God do that? What the clothes, huh? And the, when they want water, when they want food, manna, where manna come from? Anybody ever find the factory? And it's not when you bring the ball for the manna, they get it. God go, go prepare it. It's already prepared. I said to you, brethren, it is like the app on your phone. I mean, I understand my phone. When Bishop Andrews called me and he said, it's on your phone, Mr. Bishop. He says, it's on your phone. I called my grandson and said, grandson, come here. Look for this to me. Press this, press that. Yes, grandpa, sit here. Okay? It's on the phone. God already provide. It's not when you're born. It's hard you have to pray. When you, when you pray, your faith is lifted, your eyes are open, and God show you what he has already prepared. The word of God says, eyes have not seen. Are you with me? Ears have not heard. What? The things that God has. Where? Where? And that's why we don't see, man. Because the thing is in store. All the husband is in store. The wife is in store. Yes, everything is in store. Now that's why I couldn't see anything. Because it was in store. God have things in store. But let me go to my point. So Jesus took the disciples on the mountain. And he said, guys, sit. And he gave them now the, the uh, Magna Carta. Or what can be called their modus operandi. This is how you are going to function. This is how you are going to operate. This is what you are going to preach. This is what we are going to be doing. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And when you read the Bible, the first beatitude, as we call it, or blessing, blessed are the what? Poor in spirit. Let's look at that. And that is not talking about conditional poor. This is talking about discipline. That, that you have put aside that which you had. And you are going to accept now what Jesus offer when you put aside your religion and put aside your former thinking and the Jews put aside their Judaism and act, accept the almighty God you are poor in spirit and what theirs is the kingdom of heaven so when a person accept the almighty God and before I say that, if you read the whole of Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Jesus continues speaking, you know, he no stop speak. All of it going through. Till he came to the point where he spoke about the amour, about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. What is the kingdom then? The king's domain. So when we accept Jesus Christ, we are in the king's domain. We are under his rulership. I don't have to go as we, as we love to, to sing some funny song. We don't have to go through and that. All you have to do is to cry about Father. Because God Almighty becomes you and I, our Father. Hallelujah. He began by saying, you must say, our Father. 
Not my father is our father. God Almighty, whether they are Jews or Gentiles, African or, or any other descendant, God Almighty, when you accept Jesus Christ, become our father. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Him say God is a thy kingdom come. Acknowledge the kingdom of God. When you are in the kingdom of God, you are a child of God. David said, I was young and old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. You may feel down and feel like God somehow has forgotten. When you are faced with circumstances, you can't get through. But God, God, because you are a part of the kingdom of God. Look at this. In, in, in our country, we can have dual citizenship. Yes, many of us have two passports. When we're going up so you take out the one with this with the eagle. You give them that one. And when you come down, sir, you take down the next one. Because why? When you take out the one, our one coming down, you are entitled to $500 US duty for it. Yes. But if you, if you give them on the eagle, you're entitled to anything at all. You know that. Not only that, when you give them the one with the eagle coming down, how long are you staying? Where are you staying? That's right. Huh? But when you give them the one for our poor one, Hallelujah. But when you're going up, sir, you want the one with the eagle. My friend, no man, look at my friend, them man. Your friend, them check out that one. We don't have that one. You ever meet some people on the plane? They talk like American, they go on like American. And when they go, each one, they say, All citizens go in Irish land again, right? All others go to the left. Mr. Weird. They're not the same American, that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But well, let's get to the point. We are citizens of God. Although we are Jamaican, although we are who we are, but we are children of the Almighty God. We say, Our Father who art in heaven, Jesus said, Pray like this, as time must talk, because up there Him is. You are responsible. When you want a U.S. visa, you go over to Ligani, stand pipe. You, you know stand by? You like up there? No, sir. Me prefer stand by. But if you want it, you can make it the embassies. But do you know that that little piece of, of Jamaica with the with the belongs to the US. You are on US territory. Brethren, we are at Anbury. The road is rocky, the road is rough. This and that happened, this and that. Yeah. But me can tell you that this little piece of earth is God's property. I am the kingdom of God. Am I talking to you? Healing dire, food dire, security is here because I am a child of God. This is God's property. This is God's kingdom. Oh my God. Wow. This, just like all that part and the peace on Trafalgar Road. Hallelujah. That one is British territory. Hallelujah. Take off your shoes. Take off your this. Because this you are on foreign soil. When you enter the church, the church is as the embassy of God. Yes. You won't go to heaven. Come to the church for the visa. Yes. You mean we are those hypocrites? Same place. A day you get the visa stamp. Hallelujah. You have to come to the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is God's property. And when you're in the church, hallelujah, you are baptized and born again. God say yes and give the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, you have the anointing. Signify that this man and that man was born in the earth. You are a child of God. Don't talk to me, defeat to me. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. 
Hallelujah. You, you, you are into the kingdom of God. You are in the spiritual realm of the kingdom of God. And when this body, hallelujah, is expired, hallelujah, heard the, the Paul said, if in this life we have hope in Christ, we would have all men most miserable. But we have another body prepared of God, eternal in the heavens. When this body is finished, we drop off this. The spirit not die. The spirit can't die. Is the body die? The body expire. The body done. But God have a new body. And he give you a new body. And you use that body to enter the other realms of God. I hear when uh, two men were, were, were being crucified with Jesus. One, one was really not carry on. The next man says, Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom, remember me. How the Lord says, today, no man, three days time. Three days time. Huh? Not three days time. Today, thou shalt be with me personal pronoun with me we are in paradise hallelujah second corinthians 5 1 says if the early house of this tabernacle were dissolved i have a building of god not tabernacle again a building of god in the heaven Brethren and friends today, you're a child of God. You are born again. You are in the spiritual realm of the kingdom of God. When you're hungry, cry to God. When you're happy, cry to God. When you're sick, cry to God. When you're living this life, cry to God. Hallelujah, I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Whole and holy, what I'm a child of God. Hallelujah, no, I'm not, but I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Wash me. In Jesus' blood, sanctified. Somebody said, My heart can sing when I pause. Remember, this troubled world is not my final home. But until then, until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I carry. Until the day. My eyes behold the city until the day God called me oh oh I, I like to look at Steve when Steve was being stoned to death and when the man saw heaven and where I go what Steve said nobody charge charged him nobody charge him a murder would not charge him when the man look at heaven who open when you look on the grandeur and the luxury, how way my go? I told you already that I have been take, take thousands of people to the airport and them ball them ball. Yes. But all when the man I travel about, guess what? In my, in my walk toward the airplane, he now come back. <laughs> but in my go toward the plane, hold on to Jesus. You're a child of God. You are in the kingdom of God. No worry yourself. I'm a child of God. I am a, a shake of that. And I put on this. Hallelujah. My troubles are over. God Almighty. I am a child of God. I have the same trouble. But I have a different solution. God bless you today. God sanctify you. Touch somebody and bless them. And say, in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Echo of Messiah. In Jesus name. Hey. Hey! Hallelujah! Kaba satama, yoma sataya, hiko kaba sayama. Hey, 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 hey! My heart can say when I pause to remember. My heart takes here. His body stepping slow along the trail. Not always winding upward. This troubled world 
is not my final. Hey, but until then, my heart singing. Until then, shock me, boy, I'll carry on.
thank you thank you jesus but until then my heart will go on singing until then with joy i carry on we are still awaiting to be fully clothed and to be in that kingdom once and for all but until then in spite of the tribulations the trials the affection of life until then the heartaches the pains the sorrows until then my heart will go on singing hallelujah let's worship the lord everybody come on let's praise the lord jesus everybody let's praise the lord jesus everybody hallelujah what a day what a day what a day this is certainly fitting for the opening day we heard our reports we heard from our just remain standing we're going to close from our fathers and mothers these warriors that have been working so tirelessly in the vineyard and to put the icing plus on the day's procedures the lord anointed our president and he initially gave us a presidential address but then a presidential sermon hallelujah hallelujah to god be the glory we thank him today for his continued presence in our midst we won't say we thank him for showing up because he was always here but we thank him for the manifestation of his power in our midst and we say to god be the glory somebody ought to praise him somebody ought to praise him somebody ought to praise him. all right god bless you why do you continue to bask in the glory of the lord like all things else we say all good things have to come to an end and so the opening day of convention officially monday has now become history but because of technology we can have it replays thank you jesus thank you jesus and so when you have the opportunity you can always go back to the different things and look all right so we'll be closing but please be reminded that our prelude starts at 6 45 this afternoon and 7 for our opening and we are going to be starting at 7 god's willing barring any inconvenience or any unexpected thing we will be kicking off at 7 so we ask um, persons who know you have uh, key roles to play to ensure that in your you are in your position for a prompt seven o'clock start okay is that all right we started a little bit late today but thank god we you know i was coming from la the other day and i we left out a little bit late and i have to say the pilot make up some time because he landed us about 20 minutes before even though we left late it was like an expressway and so we thank god what a word hallelujah yesterday what was the word yesterday students be careful of what strange fire strange fire that was the word yesterday and today we have a combination we talked about the kingdom and hallelujah everything that's tied in so beautifully thank god for our bishop and i think some fundamental errors were made with his birth certificate nobody of his age supposed to skip and jump like that <laughs> god certainly has prepared him for a time and a season as this stretch your hand to the bishop and say god bless you bishop come on stretch your hand again and say it one more time god bless you bishop god bless you bishop god bless you god bless you we're going to invite 
Pastor Clayton Smith to come and to do the closing prayers for us in Jesus' name. Please remain standing. Let us bow our heads in prayer, everybody, everywhere. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Savior, Redeemer, Friend, we honor you, we magnify your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, you have blessed us today. We thank you for your move, the mighty move among your people. Great God, you have tabernacled with us, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for the using of our bishop, our president, Lord God, and the word that came forth. We pray that it will resonate deep within somebody's heart today. Lord God, as we go forth, Lord God Almighty, it will be something that we chew on. Lord God, and it will bring back memories, my God, of how you had dealt with your people. And how you're able to deal with us and to lead us, O oh God. We pray even now that as we go, that you will bless us continually. Bind every powers of darkness, my God, and lead us, Lord God Almighty, in the path that you have set before us. Thank you, Lord. And as we go, we ask for your continued deliverance and blessing. Remember those, O oh God, who need the Holy Ghost. Bring us back safely tonight, and that the worship will be great. Take us to a higher level, that your kingdom will be exalted, and your people will rejoice in you today. We say thanks for your blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop Andrews, please pronounce the benediction. Thank you. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the full fellowship of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever, until Jesus come. If one says, Amen. Uh, why do you meet and greet in Jesus' name? And I know there's quite a bit of that. Uh, please, to purchase soup or your meal tickets, you need to do it at the office. If you go up to the cafeteria, only meals are served there. So you'll have to buy the tickets for soup or whatever at the office right to the back here and then you can proceed to collect. Could I say that again? Your tickets, um, you have to purchase at the office, and then you will do the pickup elsewhere. The Lord Jesus richly bless you. Thanks for your cooperation. See you at 7, God's willing. Thank you.